Hello everybody, this tutorial is about using open sound control data to drive your synthesis patch in Max MSP. We have seen in previous tutorials that open sound control data is used throughout the Jamoma module system to communicate control from module to module and what I'm going to show you today will give you the tools to take almost any interface and connect it directly to a Jamoma patch. Now you can do this either inside your computer or as we were mentioning last time over the network from any other computer in the world. So for today's demonstration I'm going to use a Wacom drawing tablet and I'm going to get that data into the computer using a program called Osculator. Osculator is also excellent for connecting directly to the Wiimote interfaces and several other interfaces. So if we open Osculator, it looks like this, we'll get a window here which is where the incoming data will be displayed once we have some. And because I already have a Wacom tablet here connected to the computer, as soon as I touch the pen to the tablet, we should see data coming up in the OSC window here. Now, in order for the Wacom tablet not to operate in its normal mode of controlling the computer or as a mouse, we have to turn on the caps lock key, which I've already done. So touching the pen to the tablet now, we see a bunch of data coming in there. And we can see there that it's named Wacom slash one. I'm assuming that's the first tablet that's available here. Uh, slash pen, so that's the pen end of this pen. Slash zero, the number of the pen. And then other pieces of information, X, Y, tilt, X, tilt, Y, pressure, button, and proximity. Now, if I turn the pen upside down and use the eraser end of this pen, you'll see another set of data coming in, which is, instead of pen, says slash eraser slash zero. You'll also note that you can see the little LEDs there changing color when we have data coming in from the pen. So that will assist you knowing that it's actually working. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of data. How do we actually turn this into open sound control and send it anywhere? So first of all, we're just going to send this data internally in the computer. And all computers have an internal network, which is on IP address 127.0.0.1 which can also be referred to as local host. So if we decide that we're going to take um, some pieces of data here, and if we click in the event type, we can see many things here, but the one we're interested in is this one, OSC routing. So let's select that here for actually a number of pieces of data, and I'm just going to use the command key and select them like this. And then we can actually set the this event type for all of those simultaneously. And there we go. Now, you'll see here value, and this is very important. This is where we actually send this data. So we're sending it out as open sound control messages. The format will be as we see there. And in here, I don't have any set up. So we'll go new. And here we get a window that can be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to walk you through this now. So set up number one, and we have to tell it where we want the open sound control messages to go. So I'm going to double click there and then just type, and just turn caps lock off, local host, and then a colon. So localhost is the internal network, and then I have to write the port number that I want this to go to, and I'm just going to write 8,000 and 
10. There are many protected ports, but this is in the clear here. Then in memo, I'm just going to type Wacom. Okay. You'll see here that Oscillator has actually changed this a little bit to tell us that it's an Open Sound Control UDP packet that's been sent out here to localhost. And um, you'll see here the route, which is the same, rewriting to the same address. Okay, so we're going to close that now. Now you'll see here this little symbol, which indicates the setup that we just set up. And so again, I'm going to go down here and select all of the pieces of data that we want to send. And go here and select that. And you'll see that that gets entered for all of them. Now we don't need to worry about any other settings here at the moment. I'm just going to click in an empty space here so that that's uh, gone. And now when I start drawing on the Wacom tablet, oh, okay, hit caps lock, sorry. You'll see in fact that some of those are now going green, which means that there is actually uh, already some data being sent over Open Sound Control and something listening to that. Okay. So now our challenge is then to get that data into Max. So let's make a new patch window. I'm just going to start this completely blank for the moment. And we need to connect to the network to receive what are called UDP packets. And uh, we won't go into the detail of those, but it's essentially a networking uh, protocol. So if I just hit N for new and start writing UDP here, we see a number of things come up. And one of them is UDP receive. We can also send using UDP send open sound control messages out of this computer. But in this case, we want to receive them UDP receive. So we're going to select that. Now, we also know that we just set up a port number, which is like the street address, if you like, the house number on a street. And the street would be localhost, and the house number would be the port number. So I'm going to put in here the port number that we just entered into Oscillator, which was 8010, and just select click out here now in an open space. And you'll see down here in the max window that it says that it's binding to port 8010, which means that it's connecting to the internal network on that port and it's not complaining, so that must have happened. So if I now put the pen on the Wacom tablet, we would get data here off the network. However, we need to be able to see that data. So let's first of all just put a print object here and connect that and draw on the tablet and see what happens. Okay, there we are. We can see that we have loads of data being printed into the Max window, the pen end, the eraser end, etc. We can see all of that data coming in here. So we need to separate out these messages, the eraser end, the pen end, so that we can do different things with them. And I'm just going to put that over there for later. And so the way that we do that, if we now start with a capital O, is to look for an open sound control object which does routing. So OSC route. Okay, so we'll select that. Now we're going to put in here the arguments that we see here for data. Not all of it, but first of all, so. We know that we want data here from the Wacom. We know that we're dealing with Wacom tablet number one. We know that in this case we want the pen data. Okay. And then if we look at the pen data in Oscillator, we'll see that there's also a zero following that on most occasions. So that's the pen end. So let's now separate out, if we look at the Wacom, slash one slash eraser. So 
slash zero. Oops, slash zero. Okay. So let's connect that here. And now we'll put it in a print object and we'll call this pen. And we'll put in a print object and we'll call this eraser. Not those. So now what we should see in the max window down here is printed data from anything related to pen zero when I'm using the pen end coming out called pen and anything related to eraser zero coming out the eraser print object here whenever I use the eraser end of the pen. So the pen end and there we are. We can see information even from a distance about the proximity. There we go, proximity zero, the pen is off and when it comes on there we go, drawing. Now, if we use the eraser end, you'll see also that the print object message argument pen that we put in here is telling us this is coming from this print object. If we now use the eraser end, you'll see that this word has changed to eraser with the argument we put in here, and the data here is coming from the eraser end of the pen. You can see here proximity zero, meaning it's now off the tablet. So you can see here a number of pieces of data for both pen and eraser. Now, they may still be a little bit confusing to you because you can see here slash zero and then a number slash one, slash four, etc. So let's just look up here at, for instance, the pen data. And you'll see here that there are several pieces of data in this list. And when they're stripped out here, they're actually given a number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we look at this, we can see that 0 is x, 1 is y, pressure is 4. So if we go back over here and make ourselves, let's just disconnect these, option drag across patch cords, selects all of them, which can be quite helpful. Let's put those up there for the moment. Let's make a new OSC route object. And in this case, we look down here. We can see the format of these numbers being slash zero, slash one, slash four, for instance. So I'm going to look for slash zero information, slash one information, and slash four information. We also know if we go down here to where it changes, where is it? Eraser, there we go, let's go back up a little bit here. Yeah. That we have proximity being reported, right? Proximity. And that's either zero or one. So let's space backslash in proximity. Okay, and that's going to give us this piece of data, zero or one. And we also know if we look here that we have button one. So let's put in button slash one, which is when the pen itself is actually touching the tablet. Okay, um, so that's going to be a series of data. And we know in this case that all of this data is coming from the pen. And we've separated out the pen data on this output here. So let's pop that across there. Now we know that zero here is x, one is y, Four is pressure. So these are going to be um, floats between zero and one. Let's just put some number boxes here. A couple more. Duplicate. Just copy those across. We know that this piece of information proximity is going to be zero or one. So let's actually put a toggle here so we can see when that's true. Zero or one. And we know that this information, button 1, is also going to be 0 or 1, on or off. So, when the tablet, when the pen is on the tablet, we would expect that both of these toggle boxes would be on. And when I take the pen off the tablet, they're off. Okay. Now, we know that this first one, slash zero, is the x-coordinate. So if I put the tablet, uh, the pen on the tablet, 
and move from the far left hand side, you can see zero across the tablet to the far right hand side, you can see that goes from zero to one. And then the Y is up and down, zero, one at the top of the tablet, zero at the bottom of the tablet. And this is an interesting piece of data here, which is the amount of pressure on the tablet. So if I touch really lightly with the pen, lower numbers, if I push harder, it goes up to one quite quickly, actually. You'll also see proximity here stays on longer than button one. In other words, the tablet is telling me that the pen is close there before the pen is actually touching. So you could separate out doing things with the pen. You can see the pen's still being tracked, even though it's currently not touching. You can see pressure is at zero, not touching the tablet. And then when I touch the tablet, that could be some other use, lift it off, do something else with it, etc. So let's just quickly make use of this data. If you remember when we're making Jemoma patches, there are lots of ready objects for us to use. And one of the simplest ones that we used the other day, which was rather interesting, was the sample player. So let's drop a sample player in here. Now, what do we need in order to hear that? That's going to play samples, but we can't connect it at the moment to the audio output. So let's again, control click, paste from Jemoma, audio modules, and what do we need? We need an output. So we're going to connect, you may remember these are the two audio outputs here, and they go into these two connectors here and here. Okay, so our sample player is now actually connected to the audio output on this computer. Now, if we get ourselves a sample, just bear with me uh, one second. Oh, sorry about that. While I get up my, oh, Word seems to want to take over here. Let's go to the desktop. Sorry, excuse me, one second. Okay, and I'm just going to go and grab those samples that we were working with the other day and bring them over here so we can see them. Okay, so here we've got a bunch of uh, sounds and I'm just going to grab one of these let's say the drum and bass, and drag it and pop it in there. Now we can check that this is actually playing back uh, by hitting play, obviously. Oh, let's lock the patch first, sorry. Lock the patch, hit play, and of course nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Right, so nothing's happening because we have not yet turned the audio on. So let's turn the audio on, now we can see some signal up here. Let's also make sure that loop here is turned on so that when we hit play this keeps playing. And now we can't hear it yet because we haven't turned the audio on. Okay. So there we go, there's the audio coming up. Now, I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. Now, let's use where the pen is on the X coordinate to drive the speed of playback here. Okay. So we can um, put a message box here. I'm just going to command click in an empty space to unlock, hit, oh, sorry, hit um, M to make a uh, message box, and connect the output of this patch into the message box here, like so. And now when I move this number, we should see this message here, and there it is. Okay, so if we make the range go from 0 to 1, then I'm going to actually take the contents of this message box just by duplicating it, Command D, drag it up here, and make this 0 0.9 a variable simply by putting in the number, the argument $1, which we talked about 
the other day as a replaceable argument. Now, if we put another message, hmm, I think they have lots of different setups going on today, so if we put a new message box in here, like so, we can now see the message that comes out of there when we use the Wacom tablet on the drawing board. Oh, and that is, I just put it in completely the wrong. Okay, so that's an error. I put it in the wrong side. Sorry about that. Let's duplicate that again, pop it up here. And we want to put the number in the left hand side to replace this argument. Dollar one. And we don't want there at all. Sorry, I'm getting myself confused here. We want to feed our number into here, like so, and then pop that into here so we can see what's going on. All right. And here we go. We have this message speed slash ratio, and it goes from one down to zero. So let's plug this into here. and turn speed on, okay, and turn up the volume so we can hear that, and control the speed of playback with the pen. Here we go. So it's a bit glitchy for some reason, but you can hear that variation happening. Make this a larger number. So we'll put in here a multiplying number. Multiply. Okay, let's multiply two numbers. And then we'll multiply it by 2.0. And it has to be a floating point number. We will click on that table and drag that into there. And now we're going to turn that number 0 to 1 into 0 to 2. In fact, let's make it much more obvious. Let's make it 4. And now we're going to speed this up to 4 times its speed or down to 0. Turn this up again, grab my pen, and okay, 3, 4 times. Okay, cool. So that's working. So let's just stop the audio for a second. Now let's do two other things. Let's control whether this is going in reverse by using the um, a rate when the pen goes down, this button here. And um, let's turn the speed control on and off when the pen is within the proximity of the uh, Habit. So, first thing we need to do is find out what those messages are. So, speed on and off. It's going to be 1 or 0, and we can see the message here. So, let's just go here, select that, Apple D to duplicate, and drag that up here in the same way that we've done before. Change that 1 to a dollar $1 sign, which we're going to replace, and we're going to turn the speed variation on when the pen is close to the tablet. Okay, so that will now do that. Now we want to turn on reverse some of the time. So lock the patch, control, I mean, sorry, command and click in a blank space or use the padlock. Click on reverse and see what that message is. Reverse one or zero. Okay. Let's duplicate that again, pop that up here. Replace that one with a dollar one replaceable variable. Plug that in. Remember this button one is when the pen actually touches the tablet. So now we can control the speed when the pen is floating above the tablet using the X coordinate. And as soon as the pen touches the tablet, this will go into reverse. We'll turn both of those off, loop play and um, loop on. We could also use this to turn on play, and you could see here that we could start doing a lot of different things. So let's turn the audio on again, got playback. I'm going to just float across the top of the tablet in the proximity 
Okay, I'm not touching the tablet now. And you can hear the speed of that sample. It's a bit glitchy at the moment, but we can smooth that out with a line object. And now I'm going to touch the tablet and you'll see reverse go on. Off the tablet again, back on the tablet, reverse, off. So by just doing this simple thing, we can start scratching across that sample and varying its speed of playback quite simply. Both forward and reverse. So you can see here how powerful this is to bring in data from any control interface that we might want using open sound control. In this case, we're using the program Oscillator to get the data from the Wacom tablet and to turn it into OSC data. And you can go back and look at how we did that. You'll remember that. We entered in here localhost with a port number 8010 with a colon there. And you'll see here that UDP receive takes an argument, which is port number 8010. We call it that Wacom. You'll see here, let's just close that, that we then selected that as the output for this OSC routing for the certain variables here, but not all of them. We could select all of them, but only want to send the ones that I was wanting to use. Then you'll see here that we used OSC route to separate out the pen data from the eraser data. And then here we use another OSC rate route to separate out the various pieces of pen data. And by looking here, we can see these are numbered 0 to 4, and here 0 to 4. So from the pen data, 0 being x, y, etc. So we have x y, 4 being pressure, and then proximity, and button 1 being when the pen touches uh, this the tablet. Now, of course, we can actually just do this very, very quickly for the eraser end of the tablet, because if we look up here, we see these are the same arguments, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, button, proximity. These are actually all the same arguments that are coming from the eraser, and so we could actually just copy all of that information there. Oh, let's leave that one out. Duplicate it. That's Command D. Drag it over here to make that patch a little bigger. Make that over there. Okay. Plug this in here as well. So we've got audio output. Now we're going to use the eraser end of the pen. Send it, send it in here. And now we're going to control a separate sampler with a completely different piece of audio in it. Let's put Julia Steinbeck in there so it's really obvious that when this is different. Okay, lock my patch, turn on looping because I want this to loop. I'm also going to turn on play because we haven't yet hooked up anything to control play. And now what we should see here is the speed of playback, whether it's in reverse or not, um, all being controlled by the eraser end of the pen for this sample and the pen end of the pen for this sample. So I would be able to leave this doing something, turn the pen over, play this one, turn it back, play this one, etc. So let's give that a go. So you can hear that both are playing. Now the singing is on the eraser end of the pen, so let's just have a look at that. Okay, we can hear that, put it in reverse. Scratch the pocket, reverse, scratch the pocket. Let's go to the other end of the pen. Scratch the drums, go back, scratch the voice. And so all I'm doing is turning the pen from the tip end to the eraser end. And you can see here that very quickly we've du duplicated these controls out and we have two completely separate pieces of control. 
And here we're only looking at a single pen on the Wacom tablet. Now, it's equally possible to take MIDI data in here, MIDI continuous controllers, MIDI note numbers and so on, and we'll look at that in the next tutorial, but I hope that this gets you going with Wacom tablets, Wiimote input, uh, you can have joystick input here, a range of different controllers as, what, as a way of getting this data in, turning it into open sound control, routing it out to the internal local host network, and then grabbing that data in Max and quickly plugging that in here to some Jamoma patches that allow you to make already some quite interesting sound. Okay, thank you very much.